The United States is a system like any other, and every system has its faults. The 2008 recession is a prime example of human error and its waves into the lives of the common household. And with such a convoluted chain of command and incompetence and greed alike, it's no surprise such events unfold. The USA runs on consumers, consumers consuming as much as the consumers can. And this shouldn't be seen as a mistake. The Stars and Stripes love themselves a sweet latte and a comfy couch. Human intuition can be seemingly blinded to that new flat screen or nice home. After all, why not get away with the best if possible? And with your shiny package loan, the American dream is rated E for everyone. The banks loved the lending at the time, so get out with what you could. It's just free real estate. Well, you gotta bring furniture, but the house is free. But it's when the banks blow bubbles that you should be wary. If you want a home, chances are you want a good one. And with a mortgage, you could just have a chance at it. $19.99 for sale for $20. You come to me when you want fine European price. Bank collapse is a nasty thing, though. And it does have its history in the United States. And if you want the history of that mean 2008 crisis, you might need to go back a little, all the way back to 1999. First, let's learn what a subprime mortgage is. It's a mortgage targeted at people with not so good savings. This little practice rose in 1999 following the Federal National Mortgage Association's attempts at making home loans more accessible to those who may not have a pretty credit or savings. So in a sense, they extended the money borrowing market to those who needed money, usually and specifically for homeownership. Most of all, low credit borrowers are high risk. The banks aren't stupid, just a little clumsy, so they gave mortgages with strange terms that was directly caused by that risk. With this, people saw dollar signs and the market boomed, and it seemed like a little all right at the time. But all this was creating a lot of consumer debt, reaching two trillion in 2004. Debt is never a good thing, all around. And finally, in 2007, the cracks were really showing. Failing hedge funds directly connected to subprime loanage made as a dire warning to investors and the market pros alike. Finally again, the dreaded 2008 reared its head in humanity's direction. On September 6, 2008, all financial markets were down 20% the government taking hold of the Federal National Mortgage Association, collapsing major investment firms due to the vile subprime menace. It was so bad that one investment agency filed the largest bankruptcy in US history at the time. All this madness is fun to read about, but really, how did this happen? The Federal National Mortgage Association's risky moves seemed to be the prime culprit, but they didn't roll out the damaging exotic loan. That blame would go to the big banks, most of whom are just too large to fail. With the US household net worth declining nearly 13 trillion, which is nearly 30%, the government did its thing and the Congress passed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, which held out about $800 billion. 